in this video we are going to talk about organophosphate poisoning or we can also call it the pathophysiology of organophosphates so organophosphates are basically pesticides and almost all of our food we consume have been exposed to pesticides and obviously these pesticides also enter our body along with the food so when they enter in our body if they are uh, present in a large amount they will lead to some seriously dangerous effects in our body so uh, the role of uh, uh, acetylcholine is important in this organophosphate poisoning and uh, along with the acetylcholine the role is of acetylcholine esterase enzyme and also the acetylcholine receptor so let's look upon it suppose these are the two nerve terminals so what happens is that acetylcholine is formed inside the cell or inside the neuron sorry the acetylcholine is formed inside the neuron and it is stored in the form of vesicles and when a signal comes these vesicles fuse with the membrane of the neuron and release it in its surrounding this acetylcholine then binds to the receptors present on the adjacent neuron and leads to the activation of muscles also when the signal is released or the required activation of the muscles has happened what happens is that this acetylcholine is converted into acetate and choline with the help of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase now this is the normal function which happens let me repeat it what happens is that acetylcholine is produced in the neuron and it is stored in the form of vesicles when the signal comes these vesicles fuse with the membrane of the neuron and they are released into the surrounding environment and uh, these acetylcholine molecules then bind to the receptors present on its adjacent neuron and leads to the activation of muscles also when the activation of the muscles the required activation of the muscles has happened this acetylcholine is degraded into acetate and choline by the help of enzyme acetylcholine esterase now what happens due to organophosphate the role of organophosphate here is that it inhibits the acetylcholine esterase enzyme how it inhibits it it is by um, phosphorylating a serine residue present on its active site here is a serine residue suppose and these organophosphates phosphorylate it and hence the acetylcholine esterase becomes inactivated so what happens after it inactivates obviously the acetylcholine will not be able to get degraded into acetate and choline then this acetyl acetylcholine with uh, further bind to the receptors that is it it will keep binding to the receptors and the activation of the muscles will increase and there will be a tetany like uh, situation will be created that there is there will be more of activation of the muscle and hence the response will not get stopped because of the absence of acetylcholine esterase now one thing more uh, here is to mention that the organophosphate uh, reaction is irreversible that is it cannot be reversed however there is a therapy available in which we use atropine so this atropine molecule's role is here is that it will bind to the acetylcholine receptors that is it will competitively bind with the acetylcholine receptor and hence it will not let acetylcholine molecules to bind to the acetylcholine receptors and hence the activation of the muscles get decreased now there is a series of symptoms related to the organophosphate poisoning and they are described as sludge S refers to salivation. L refers to lacrimation. Lacrimation means the tears coming out of the eyes. U means urination or there is urinary incontinence. D for diarrhea. G for GIT distress. E for emesis. Emesis is like vomiting. So the troops who were likely to be attacked with chemical weapons also carry auto injections. uh with the atropine for rapid injection into the muscles of the thigh so what happens is that when they suspect that organophosphate poisoning 
uh, through a chemical weapon may happen they just uh, inject this atropine uh, injections into their body so that uh, they are prevented against this thing